In the headlines, Nigerian Education Loan Fund postpones student loan application for state-owned institutions. Rivers women block Port Harcourt Airport gate in protest. Seven killed, 11 injured in Lagos Ibadan Expressway accident. On the foreign scene, Senegal reports 78 COVID-19 cases among returning Hajj pilgrims. Welcome to the news update on Trust Television. I am Aisha Salihu. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. Now the news in detail. The management of the Nigerian Education Loan Fund on Tuesday announced a 14-day postponement of the application process for student loan for state institutions due to low data submissions. A statement by the agency in Abuja on Monday said the decision was necessitated by the failure of several state-owned institutions to upload the required student data and fee information to the NEL Fund student verification system. The fund said the extension will provide additional time for state institutions to comply with the data submission requirements and ensure their students can benefit from the federal government student loan scheme. It said to facilitate an efficient and error-free application process, it is crucial that all state institutions provide complete and accurate information. The chairperson of the Federal University of Technology, Minal Chapter of the Academic Staff Union of Universities, Professor Bolahon Bolari, has asked President Bola Tinubu to evaluate and sign the renegotiated agreement between ASU and the federal government to restore efficiency in the Nigerian university system. He stated this in MENA shortly after a peaceful protest by the union to express their grievance over unpaid salaries and allowances. This time, the university students joined the protest holding placards with various inscriptions while chanting solidarity songs. President of the Students' Union Government, Eze Nabuike, who led students in solidarity with the academic staff, said that bear the brunt anytime lecturers embark on strike. The union members said they were re resolute in their demands. The Ipo community women have blocked the entrance to the Port Hackett Airport in River State as early as 7.30 on Tuesday morning. The women from Ipo, which is one of the host communities of the airport, blocked the gate at the airport roundabout, waving placards, singing, wailing and even cooking at the gate. They carried banners with inscriptions like, We demand our citizens' rights, Ipo women peaceful protest, among others. Their actions had caused a build-up of traffic as passengers could not access the airport. This would be the second time in six months the women were protesting. <laughs> <laughs> and now to the southwest region of the country, the Ogun State Governor Dakwa Abiodun was elected the chairman of the Southern Governors Forum. His Anambra State counterpart, Professor Charles Soludo, emerged as the vice chairman of the forum. The Southern Governors Forum serves as the umbrella body for the 17 governors from the Southwest, South South, and Southeast geopolitical zones of Nigeria. Abiodun succeeds the former governor of Ondo State, Rotimi Akeredolu, who died in December last year. And now to the National Assembly. The Senate and her committee investigating a 30 trillion naira ways and means facility expanded between 2015 and 2023 under the previous administration has stated that investigation is still on course. Chairman of the committee, Senator Isa Jibrin, representing Kogi East on Monday, 
debunked an online report which alleged that the investigation, which began in March 2024, is in limbo. He explained that although the committee was given six weeks when inaugurated in March to carry out the exercise and report to the Senate, it had become imperative to exceed the time frame given the sensitivity of the assignment. The committee chairman disclosed that required findings have been carried out, evident in a letter of reminder recently written to the Office of the Accountant General of the Federation. And now to judicial matters. The Federal High Court sitting in Lagos has ordered celebrity bartender and businessman Pascal Okechuku, popularly known as Cubana Chief Priest, to forfeit the sum of 10 million naira to the federal government as a fine in lieu of the charge made against him for alleged abuse of the naira. This was contained in the terms of settlement agreement with the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, which was adopted before the trial judge, Justice Kende Ogundare, on Tuesday. At the proceedings, counsel for the EFCC, Belkiso Buhari Bala, informed the court that parties in the charge entered into the out-of-court settlement and same was duly signed by both parties. The defendant's counsel, senior advocate of Nigeria, Chika Osolu Ojuko, commended the reasonable action of the anti-graft agency in, handling, in having the matter resolved. He said the defendant is equally remorseful and promises to turn over a new leaf going forward. Ojuko also said that the consequences of the settlement is for the court to dismiss the charge. Justice Ogundare, in his short ruling, adopted the terms of settlement and consequently struck out the charge. The Federal High Court in Lagos has granted an application by the Attorney General of the Federation to extradite one Samuel Abiodun to the United States of America to face trial for alleged wire fraud and conspiracy to commit money laundering. Justice Akintayo Aluko gave the order on June 14, 2024, following the AGF's application filed by Kende Fagbemi of the Federal Ministry of Justice. Specifically, the federal government prayed for the super surrender and extradition of Abiodun to face two counts of wire fraud in violation of Title 18, United States Code Section 1343, carrying a maximum term of imprisonment of 20 years, a conspiracy to commit money laundering in violation of Title 18, United States Code Section 1956H, carrying a maximum term of imprisonment of 20 years. Abiodun, through his counsel, Demola Adekoya, denied the allegations unchallenged, among others, the court's power to order his extradition. And on to security matters. The Akwaibom State Police Command said it has rescued a retired Shell Petroleum Company worker who was kidnapped last week by four unknown armed men dressed in military camouflage. The police public relations officer, ASP Tim Fong John, who disclosed this in a statement made available to newsmen, stated that the 63-year-old kidnapped victim was rescued and hurt in Ikot Udobong village in Etim Ekwa local government area following intelligence. She also disclosed that one of the suspected kidnappers sustained injury from a gunshot when the gang engaged the police in a gun duel who, who was later confirmed dead when rushed to the hospital. Still on security matters, the Gamba State Police Command has arrested four people for alleged criminal conspiracy and theft of transformers. The suspect, which includes the village head and serving councillor, was arrested while transporting a transformer stolen from Garin Majidadi of the Akol local government area of the state, Hassan Koli has more. These are the four people suspected to have stolen a transformer in Majidadi village in Akol local government area of Gwambe state. Parading the suspect at the command headquarters in Gwambe on Monday, police public relations officer Buhari Abdullahi said the suspect 
included the Sabin councillor representing Kumo East, the blessed hate of Garim Majidati and two others. We have Muhammad Majidati, 40 years of age, a village head of Garim Majidati village, Kumo, our local government. Number two, we have Honorable Abdullahi M. Fanda, 43 years of age, a councillor representing Kumo East. Number three, we have Mohammed Sani, male of 43 years of age, Sarkinyaki Quarters Kumo, our local government. Wild receiver is Bello R. Okumo, 59 years of age, of Jaura Musa Quarters Kumo, our local government area. That on the 21st of June 2024, at about 17.5 hours, while acting on a credible intelligence information, police detectives from Akko Division intercepted the above mentioned suspect with stolen electrical transformer, which was stolen from Garim Majid Ali village. The said transformer has since been recovered, as you can see. The councillor, however, distanced himself from stealing the said transformer, saying they were acting on the community's request. I am here for the case of transformer theft. However, it is not a theft. The transformer was donated to the community by a politician, and the community is the one who decided to sell it. We sat down together with the village head of Garim Majidati and all stakeholders before making the decision to sell the transformer. I even asked them to try it officially before we proceed. The issue is that it was sold before getting approval from appropriate authorities, but it is not a theft. The police confirmed that the transformer was sold at the price of 1,500,000 naira to one Bello Ardo Kumo who is under police custody and will be charged to court upon the conclusion of the investigation. Hassan Kohli, Trusty D News, Gwambi. And now to a sad development in the southwest region of the country. Seven people have lost their lives, while another 11 suffered varying degrees of injuries in a crash which occurred on Monday night at about 9.33 p.m. around the Ogere area of the Lagos Ibadan Expressway. The accident involved a Mazda bus and a truck with number plate. The Mazda bus, due to excessive speed, reportedly lost control and rammed into the truck from behind. The spokesperson of the Ogun State Sector Command of the Federal Road Safety Corps, Flores Okwe, disclosed this in a statement made available to journalists on Tuesday. Okwe said that while the injured were taken to Patmag Hospital Ogere for medical attention, the corpses of the dead were deposited at False Mog Ipara. And in business, the number of electricity consumers rose by 210,000 from 12.12 million in the fourth quarter of 2023 to 12.33 million in the first quarter of 2024. The National Bureau of Statistics stated in its electricity report for the first quarter of 2024 released on Tuesday in Abuja that the increase was by 1.78%. The review focuses on energy build, revenue generated and customers by discourse under the reviewed period. It stated that on a year-on-year -year basis, the number of electricity customers increased by 9.47% in quarter 1, 2024, from 11.27 million reported in quarter 1, 2023. The World Bank said it has disbursed a total of $45.5 million to the National Identity Management Commission under the Digital Identification for Development Project. According to the Nigeria Digital Identification for Development Project report published by the bank on its website, the project is aimed at enrolling more Nigerians for the national identification number. According to the Apex Bank, Nigeria was able to secure the funding for the passing into law of the Nigerian Protection Act in June last year. The fund was dispersed in multiple tranches between December 2021 
and April 2024, and disbursement is still ongoing. The $45 million so far released represents about 10.5% of the total project's cost, which is put at $430 million. This is a news update coming to you live on Trust Television. Still ahead. Oshun ancient town perform rites to announce arrival of new yam. More news on return this day. Attention loyal readers, exciting news coming your way. That's right. Starting from the first weekend in July 2024, we're bringing you something special. We're saying goodbye to Daily Trust on Sunday and hello to the all-new Weekend Trust. Every Saturday, beginning July 6, 2024, get ready for a richer, redesigned weekend reading experience. Weekend Trust will be your perfect weekend companion, packed with all the news, views and analysis you love. Missing the Sunday edition? No worries. Weekend Trust will fill the gap and more. And don't forget, you can stay up to date with breaking news on our website at www.dailytrust.com. Mark your calendars for Saturday, July 6, 2024. Weekend Trust is coming out soon and you won't want to miss out. This is Trust TV, documenting the Nigerian story. Welcome back and thanks for staying with us on the news update. Let's have another look at some of our top stories. Nigerian Education Loan Fund postponed student loan application for state-owned institutions. Rivers women block Port Harcourt Airport gate in protest. And now moving on to more stories. The leadership of the Christian Association of Nigeria and the Jamaatu Nasser Islam in Plateau State on Tuesday reacted to Governor Caleb Motwang's Executive Order 003, which prohibits religious groups from blocking roads during religious activities. The order also requires religious centers, churches and mosques to submit their building approvals issued by the Just Metropolitan Development Board. While Khan has declared support for the decision, the JNI said it is still studying the letter. Responding on behalf of Khan, the state chairman of the group, Reverend Polycap Lubo, expressed support for the government's executive order 003 and urged people to support it. Consumption of new yam in ancient Yoruba town is heralded by traditional rites in line with culture. The new yam rites is a key component of Omodenje festival in Ilase Ijesha town of Obokun local government area of Ocean State. Hamido Yegbari files in this report. Elaja is a traditional rite that must be carried out before new yam could be brought to the market or consumed by people in Ilase Ijesha town in Obokun local government area of Ocean State. The traditional ruler of the town, Alashe of Ilase, Oba Jima Isiaka Adeshina said, Elijah is a key component of the Omadenje annual festival in Elashe, Ijisha. The meaning of Elijah is for new yam to enter market. If you have not entered, if we have not done that Elijah, that means the new yam cannot enter market. And the community cannot even, as well as the royal's father, cannot eat the new, the new yam until when the the larger take place. So after the larger took place, that's only when we can eat the new yam. That's only when new yam can enter our market. In accordance with the tradition, a very senior traditional chief in Ilashe Ijesha, the Ordofin, must be in seclusion for seven days as part of the activities commemorating the festival. Uh, Ordofin have to be in a seclusion for good seven days. We are he will be praying for the peace uh, of the town, development of the town, and for all people, both home and abroad. The leader of the female traditional chiefs in the town, Yeyerisha of Ilashe Ijesha, Fumilayo Ashaulu Akindele, 
and the district head of the Aajo Ajarabiolu town, Alajo Ajarabiolu Mokaila ADBC cautioned traders against inflating prices of commodities in the market. So I went to Ilase market, Shedo market, Ilase Gesa, to go and tell our people there they are selling the market there to reduce their price that they are selling their market. My advice for market women in our market do not set the higher price for all our community members. The people of Ilashe Ejesha are resolute in their determination to sustain the culture and tradition of the ancient town. Amid Ojiegbade, Trust TV News, Oshobo. The Central Bank of Nigeria on Monday issued new measures it is currently putting in place to boost Naira liquidity and raise diaspora remittances. According to its latest circular, the Apex Bank said eligible international money transfer operators will now have access to Naira liquidity through the bank's window. This initiative is designed to widen access to local currency liquidity, ensuring smoother and more efficient settlement processes by remittances. Signed by W.J. Kanya, Acting Director of the Trade and Exchange Department at the CBN, said transactions executed before noon on a trading date will be settled on the same day. According to the circular, all participants are required to submit daily regulatory returns to the CBN. We'll take it away from Nigeria now. Senegal says it has detected COVID-19 in dozens of pilgrims returning from their Hajj journey in Mecca. From tests conducted at Dakar's Blaise Diag International Airport, 78 cases of COVID-19 were recorded. Senegal's health ministry said the results are not surprising. It said returning pilgrims had been advised to wear masks and self-isolate. Authorities said they have stepped up surveillance. Saudi officials on Sunday said more than 1,300 people died during this year's Hajj pilgrimage. They blamed the fatalities on extremely high summer temperatures. The Court of Cassation in Paris has ruled in favor of the Port of Dola in its dispute with the French group below over container terminal concessions. The court overturned the previous decision by the Paris Chamber of Commerce, which had ordered the port to pay 58.6 million pounds to a below subsidiary that lost a bid for the concession. This marks a major victory for the port of Dola in a five-year legal battle against Dola International Terminal, formerly a below subsidiary now owned by MSC Group. That had sued the port after losing the contract renewal for the container terminal below and its partner, APMT, had managed the terminal for 15 years and claimed the bidding process was unfair. Finally, in sports news, African shot put champion Chukwebuka Enekwechi has set his eyes on the podium for Team Nigeria in the upcoming Olympics. The three-time African champion secured a first gold medal for Nigeria in the 2024 African Championships in Dola, Cameroon on Friday. Records and streaks are meant to be broken so I guess I have been on some kind of streak since 2018. It shows how old I am getting, but also that I'm more mature and more experienced that I want to face the challenges as they come. Chukwe Buka says this. Still in sports, Arsenal are ready to pay the release of 58 million pounds clause of athletic Bilbao forward Nico Williams. It is gathered that Chelsea are also expected to hold further talks with the player's agents 
over a potential transfer from Athletic Bilbao this summer. It is suggested that Arsenal and Chelsea are the ones advancing for the moment. Liverpool, Manchester City, Manchester United, Tottenham, Barcelona and Paris Saint-Germain also all like the player, but this is not anticipated to be a simple or cheap deal to get done, and that's caused uncertainty among some parties. It has been widely reported that Chelsea are also unsure about being able to afford Williams. Williams is currently with the Spanish national team at the European Champions Championship in Germany. And that concludes the news update at this hour on Trust Television. Do not forget, you can always follow us across all of our social media platforms and also join our YouTube live stream for more news, programs and documentary. I'm Aisha Salihu. Thank you so much for watching. Join us again.